Hello, my name is Maverick Madison, and this is my capstone submission for EEE 120. Here's my chosen design for the electronic pool filler. Firstly, I'm just going to go over the inputs and the restrictions needed for this design. Firstly, we have input L, which takes on two values, zero meaning the pool level is normal, and one meaning the pool level is low and we need to start slow filling. Additionally, we have input V, which takes on two values as well, a value of zero meaning no fast fill is needed, or a value of one, which means the pool level is very low and a fast fill is needed. And of course, we have a clock and we have a reset for all the flip flops. In this design, I decided to use a more machine build since more machines are generally preferred over melee machines. So here we have outputs Q2, Q1, Q0, which will indicate our binary representations of each of our states that we will define. And in our state definition table, we will define outputs R and F. Outputs R and F each take on two values as well. R equals zero means that our slow fill valve is off, and a value of one means that our slow fill valve should allow water flow. And for output F, a value of zero means that the fast fill valve is off, and a value of one means that the fast fill valve should allow water flow. For the actual rules of this design, our output F may be asserted for no more than two clocks and may not reassert again until our input V is zero for at least one clock. And secondly, our design must have a minimum of five states. So to begin, I'm just going to go over my state definitions that I've done. In total, I have five states. So in this case, I will be using three flip-flops. So in this case, with three flip-flops, I should have eight possibilities, but the other three possibilities will just be don't cares. So for my first state, I just have state zero with a binary representation of zero, 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 and outputs R and F being both zero. And this indicates the valve idle or reset state. My state one has a binary representation of zero, zero, one, and outputs R equals one and F equals zero. And this signifies a valve slow fill state for state one. State two has the binary representation zero, one, zero, and outputs R equals zero and F equals one. And this signifies our first clock cycle of the valve fast fill state. State three has the binary representation zero, one, one, and outputs R equals zero and F equals one as well. And this signifies our second continuation clock cycle of the valve fast fill state. And my fifth and final state, state four, has binary representation one, zero, zero, and outputs R equals zero and F equals zero. And this signifies my cooldown or stop valve in its track state, which is relative to our fast filling states. I have a small handful of assumptions for this design that I'll quickly go over. So whenever my input L is equal to one and V is equal to one, we assume that the pool is very low rather than just low since very low takes higher precedence. Additionally, we can assume that input V can be asserted for less than two clocks. This means that it is able to fast fill and shift back to a normal level state or slow filling state. And mind you, for the slow filling state, we can assume that slow filling does not have a clock restriction in this design. Additionally, we assume that input V is able to be asserted for just over two clocks, meaning that we are still in need of a filling of some sort. And we will see this later on when I showcase this schematic. Another thing we can take into account is when F and V are asserting or negating. We can say that V and F assert when the valves are allowing fast filling, and we can say that they negate when the valves are allowing slow filling or they're at a normal level. And to be a bit more clear on this, we can say that V asserts and F negates respectively when V is asserted for just over two clocks. So for example, like a third clock. Finally, we can say that throughout this entire design, when input L is equal to zero and when input V is equal to one, this is an impossible condition for the inputs since the pool level cannot be normal and very low. So we can say this is a don't care. I decided to choose this design over my other design since it seemed a lot more intuitive compared to the other one. Additionally, the design flow in this schematic had a lot more manageability compared to the other one and allowed for us to be able to briskly get out of the fast filling state a lot easier and more efficiently. Even though the other design had fewer arrows in the diagram, it was very isolated in a way that made it a little bit complicated. So I decided to choose this one. Now I will go ahead and show you guys the simulation. So starting now, we are currently in state zero, which is our idle state. If L is equal to zero and V is equal to zero, we know that by the inputs that we are at a normal pool level and no fast fill is needed. So we stay in state zero, which is the binary representation zero, 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 with output R being zero and F being zero. And since this is a more machine, we will always see our outputs upon a clock cycle. So when L is zero and V is zero and we clock, we stay in state zero and our output R and F are both zero. Now, say if we did not clock and the output changed when the input changed, it would be incorrect for my design since that is what a melee machine does, not a more machine. 
the more machine is based on the current state. So in order for us to see the output, we need to rely on a clock cycle. And for a Mealy machine, if we want to see our new output, we just see it through the inputs and the states. So keeping this in mind, what if we're in state zero and we have inputs L being one and V being zero? Then the pool level is low and we need to start slow filling. So now that we have our inputs, we just need a clock and we can see from our outputs after clocking, we are now in the state zero, zero, one, which is state one or slow filling. And our output for R is one and our output for F is zero, indicating that our output one means a slow fill valve should allow water flow. So now if we're in state one and we get inputs LE being zero and V being zero and we clock, we should expect us to go back to state zero since input L and V being zero indicates that we're at a normal pool level and we don't need a fast fill. So as long as we clock, we go back to zero, 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 which is state zero and our outputs for R and F are both zero. Now, if we're in state zero and we get inputs L being one and V being one, we define this as the pool level being very low over just low. So we use that precedence to shift over to state two, which is a binary representation zero, one, zero to fast fill. So as long as we clock, we should expect our binary representation to have zero, one, zero, and our outputs R being zero and our output F being one. So this should indicate that our fast fill valve should allow water flow since we're in state two. So now we've done all the combos for state zero. So let's just go back to state zero and head on over to state one, which is input L being one and V being zero. So now we're in state one to slow fill. Now say we are in state one and we get inputs L being one and V being zero again, and we clock. We should expect to stay in state one since slow filling does not have a restriction. So input L being one and V being zero indicates that the pool level is low and we need to start slow filling. So as long as we are still in state one, we will just loop back into state one and continue slow filling. Now, what if we're in state one and we get inputs L being one and V being one? We describe this in state zero whenever it did the exact same thing. When L is one and V is one, we define this as the pool level being very low over just low so that we use the precedence to shift over to state two, which is a binary rep zero, one, zero. So, L being one, V being one, and we clock. We go to binary rep zero, one, zero, or state two, which is the fast filling state. And our outputs for R and F are R being zero and F being one, which indicates that the fast fill valve should allow water flow. Now, as I stated before, if L is zero and V is one for any of the states of this schematic, it is a don't care. It will never happen in real time because it's a don't care. It is not possible for the pool level to be normal and very low at the same time. So if we were to do this, it wouldn't it wouldn't matter. We don't care about it. So now let's just go back to where we were talking about, which is state two or fast filling. So I'm just going to go from state zero back to state two, which indicates a fast fill. So if we're in state two and we get the inputs L being zero and V being zero, we acknowledge that the pool level is normal with no fast fill needed. So we should expect R to be zero and F to be zero and our binary rep to be zero, zero, zero. So if this were to happen, zero, zero, clock, we get output zero, zero, zero as our binary rep and R zero and F is zero. So let's just head on back to state two again for another combination. If we're in state two and we get inputs L being one and V being zero, we acknowledge the fact that the pool level is now low and it needs to be slow filled. So we wanna head over to state one. So with this input combination, L being one, V being zero, and clock, we head on back to state one, which is binary rep zero, zero, one, and we expect our output R and F to be R being one and F being zero, which indicates that the slow fill valve should allow water flow. Now let's head on back to state two again to go over our last input combination. So say we're in state two and we get inputs L being one and V being one. Again, we're still in need of a fast fill here since the pool level is very low. So we shift on over to state three now, which is zero, one, one to fast fill. So as long as we clock, we are now in binary rep zero, one, one, which is state three. This is our second continuation of the two cycle clock according to our restriction. And as we can see, our outputs R and F are R being zero and F being one, which indicates that the fast fill valve should allow water flow. 
Now, as I stated before, this counts as the second and final or the maximum number of assertions for F by the restriction as defined. Therefore, this design according to state three has three options again. We may get again L being zero and V being zero, indicating that we have a normal pool level. So as long as we clock, we will head on over to the binary rep 000, which is state zero idle. And R is zero and F is zero, meaning that meaning that both slow and fast fill valves are off. Now, if we go back to state three, which is 0, 1, 1, if we get the input combination L being one and V being zero again, this indicates that we are in a need of slow filling, which is state one or zero, zero, one. So if we have L being one, V being zero, and we clock, we will head back to state one, which is a binary rep zero, zero, one, output R being one, and F being zero, which indicates that the slow fill valve should allow water flow. So now let's head on over back to state three, which is binary rep 011. Here comes the point where the restriction of the schematic needs to be managed. So if we're in state three and we get the input combination L being one and V being one, we still have a need for fast filling. In this case, we want to make sure that F is not asserted for a third time because that is against the rules. So following this logic, we want to move on to state four, which is the cooldown or the stopping of the valve state. So if we have inputs L being one and V being one and we clock, we go on to the cooldown state, which is a binary rep one zero zero. And this state has outputs R and F both being zero. So therefore, state four, which is our cooldown or stopping of the valve state, is following this rule set that we have here. However, there's another part to this restriction that we need to follow. In this case, we need to make sure that our input V is equal to zero for at least one clock cycle before we can start fast filling again. This is the point in time where I decided to make this design pretty intuitive. Since V must be zero for one clock and as directed by state three's input values going on to the cooldown state, we're still in need of a fill. So it would make sense to eliminate the input possibilities of V being equal to one, since we need V to be equal to zero for at least one clock cycle. So in this case for state four, we have don't cares for when L is zero and V is one, and for when L is one and V is one. Additionally, since we are in need of a fill, we have a don't care for when L is equal to zero and V is equal to zero, since the pool level isn't normal and we need to fill. Therefore, this leaves us with the possibility that fulfills the restriction requirement, and that is to have inputs L being 1 and V being 0, which indicates a need for slow filling or shifting to state 1, which has the binary representation 0, 0, 1. So as long as we clock, we have 0, 0, 1, which is state 1, and our output R is 1, and our output F is 0. This makes the most sense intuitively since we stopped all the valves with a need for water filling and slowly started filling them back up again through state one. And we know that we can go back to fast filling straight from state one through our input value combination, L being one and V being one. And this has come to the point where we have gone over all the input possibilities for each of the states as we have been able to follow all the rule sets according to this capstone project. And I almost forgot that we also have a reset input so that we can go back to the idle state or the reset state at any point in time. So if we're in state one, which is a slow filling state, we can always just reset and we will go back to state zero. If we're in state two, which indicates a fast fill, we can reset, go back to state zero, which indicates a normal pool level again. A reset input is always important to have as we want to be able to manage our design at any point in time. Finally, I'd like to reemphasize that the outputs R and F of this more machine design relies strictly on the fact that I have states and clock cycles that are managing these outputs, as opposed to melee machine, which only relies on the inputs in the states to get your output. So yeah, that has been my capstone project for the electronic pool filler with five distinct states. My name is Maverick Madison, and this has been for the electronic pool filler design for EEE 120 capstone. Thank you.